The headlines are electric. Valuations are hitting the billions. Every company on earth seems to be racing to slap the letters A and I onto their name. For anyone who remembers the late 1990s, this all feels familiar. Okay, Dino. I gotta go to a lot of stores to get what you like. I'll be back. If you leave me now. Hey man, I'm getting car sick. I think I'm in a boot. The frantic energy, the media hype, the feeling that you're on the cusp of a revolution. It's an unavoidable sense of deja vu. It has everyone asking the same urgent question. Is this AI boom just another dot-com bubble waiting for a spectacular market crashing pop? Is it? Who knows? It's easy to see the parallels, but if you look just beneath the surface, past the hype, you'll find that the foundation of this AI revolution is built from something completely different. It's not a house of cards, it's a skyscraper. And to understand why it's so solid, we first need to travel back in time and remember what the dot-com bubble was really made of. The defining feature of the dot-com era wasn't just excitement. It was a complete detachment from reality. Profitability? That was a problem for the future. The only thing that mattered was a metric that seems absurd today. Eyeballs. How many people were looking at your website? That was it. That was the whole game. That's just it. The logic was, if you could just get millions of people to your site, you'd eventually figure out how to make money from them. This led to companies like Pets.com, which famously spent hundreds of millions of dollars on Super Bowl ads and sock puppets, all while losing money on nearly every single bag of dog food it sold. Webvan promised to revolutionize grocery delivery, but burned through almost a billion dollars building massive high-tech warehouses before realizing the logistics and demand just weren't there. They were chasing eyeballs, not dollars. And the technology itself was painfully primitive. The grand vision of an online world was being piped through screeching 56K dial-up modems. E-commerce was clunky and felt unsafe. The digital highways needed for this revolution were barely paved country roads. They were selling a future that the present simply couldn't deliver. It was a frenzy of unprofitable companies going public, their stocks soaring on pure speculation before they came crashing down, taking the entire market with them. Down by between three and four and a half percent generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're red everywhere essentially, down by four, five percent. We're down over 16 percent. Dow at the same time has fallen about 18 percent. The stock market is now down 21%. Because we're now down 43%. It was a bubble built on flimsy promises and flawed metrics. Lies. It's all lies, Jay. But the AI boom of today isn't built on promises. It's built on products that are generating staggering amounts of cold, hard cash. Right now. Let's talk about the single biggest difference. Real products and real revenue. This isn't about eyeballs, it's about invoices getting paid. At the heart of the AI gold rush is NVIDIA. They aren't selling a dream, they're selling the essential shovels and pickaxes. Their GPUs are the engines required to train and run the massive AI models that power everything. The brain's behind the whole thing. In early 2024, NVIDIA announced quarterly revenue of over $22 billion. That's not a typo, a 265% increase from the year before. What? This isn't a vague promise of future monetization. This is one of the fastest growing revenue streams the world has ever seen. Or look at Microsoft. They didn't just buy into the hype, they integrated it. Their AI tool, Copilot, isn't a standalone product. It's a $30 per month add-on for their existing Office 365 customers. With hundreds of millions of users, this is like adding a high margin turbocharger to an engine that was already one of the most profitable on the planet. Even OpenAI, the company that kicked off this frenzy with ChatGPT, has a powerful two-pronged business model. Millions of individual users pay for ChatGPT+, and thousands of businesses pay to use its API to power their own apps. They are on track for billions in revenue. These aren't flimsy dot-com business plans. They are robust, functioning, and highly profitable money-making machines. But having a great product is one thing. Being able to deliver it to the entire world instantly is another. And that's thanks to an unsung hero that simply didn't exist in 1999. The AI revolution did not spring out of nowhere. It's built on the shoulders of a giant that was constructed over the last 20 years. 
the cloud. While the dot-com era had dial-up, the AI era has Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. These companies have spent trillions, with a T, building a global network of hyper-efficient data centers. This gives anyone, from a kid in their dorm room to a massive corporation, access to almost infinite, on-demand computing power. Supercomputing capabilities that were once reserved for governments and top research labs are now available to rent with a credit card. Think about what this means. In 1999, if you wanted to scale a service, you had to physically buy, install, and maintain your own servers in a closet somewhere. It was slow, expensive, and couldn't handle sudden spikes in traffic. Today, an AI application can be developed and deployed to a global audience of millions in an afternoon. This mature, scalable infrastructure is the steel foundation that was completely missing from the dot-com era sandy ground. It allows real products to be delivered, reliably, at a global scale. And because of this, businesses aren't just adopting AI because it's cool. They're adopting it for one very simple reason. It makes them more money. Businesses are flocking to AI because it delivers a clear, immediate, and measurable return on investment, or ROI. The value isn't theoretical, it's showing up on their financial statements. For software companies, tools like GitHub Copilot are helping developers write code up to 55% faster, directly increasing the output of their most expensive employees. That's a massive productivity gain. In customer service, AI chatbots can now handle the vast majority of common questions, freeing up human agents to deal with complex problems and dramatically cutting operational costs. And it goes deeper. Way down deep. In the pharmaceutical industry, AI is being used to analyze gigantic biological data sets to accelerate the discovery of new drugs. A process that once took a decade and billions of dollars can now be shortened significantly. The economic impact of this alone is almost impossible to overstate. Unlike the dot-com days where value was a fuzzy future concept, the value of AI is quantifiable and immediate. But this isn't just happening in the tech world. It's everywhere. AI's true power lies in the fact that it's seeping into every corner of our economy, supported by the very giants that survived the last bubble. Another huge stabilizing factor is who is driving this ship. Who's driving? The dot-com boom was largely fueled by hyper-optimistic venture capitalists and everyday retail investors throwing money at any company with a dot-com in its name. It was a chaotic, speculative frenzy. Today, while there's still plenty of venture capital, the primary drivers are the world's largest and most profitable companies, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Meta. These titans aren't making small, frivolous bets. They are engaged in a strategic, high-stakes arms race, investing tens of billions of dollars to weave AI into the very fabric of their core businesses. For them, AI is not a speculative side project. It's the next evolutionary step for their search engines, their cloud platforms, their advertising networks, and their software suites. Their massive long-term investments provide a powerful anchor for the entire market, lending it a stability and legitimacy that was completely absent in the Wild West of the late 90s. So, with all this solid foundation, does this mean there's no risk that everything with an AI label is a guaranteed winner? Not at all. There is froth, and a shakeout is coming. But it will look very different from the crash of 2000. To say there's no hype in the AI market would be absurd. The excitement is real, and with it comes a dose of irrationality. There are startups with astronomical valuations that have little more than a slick presentation and a thin layer on top of OpenAI's technology. Many companies are AI washing, just adding the buzzword to their marketing without any real substance. Many of these companies will fail. Valuations for some will come crashing back down to earth. This is a natural, even healthy part of any major technological shift. It's the market's way of sorting the signal from the noise. But here is the critical difference. The dot-com bust was a cataclysm. It was a system-wide collapse that wiped out almost everyone, punishing solid companies like Amazon right alongside the failures like Pets.com. The market lost faith in the entire concept of the internet for a while. An eventual AI correction, on the other hand, will be a shakeout. It will be a process of creative destruction where the weak, unprofitable, and undifferentiated companies are weeded out. 
but the strong companies, the ones with real technology, defensible products, and actual revenue will survive, thrive, and consolidate their leadership. This isn't a bubble bursting, it's a market maturing. So, is the AI boom the next dot-com bubble? I don't know. The evidence says no. The dot-com bubble was a vision built on hype fueled by pure speculation and ultimately failed by primitive technology and a lack of real business models. The AI revolution is fundamentally different. It's a reality built upon decades of infrastructure development in the cloud. It's driven by tangible ROI that businesses can see on their bottom line. And it's anchored by the strategic long-term investments of the most profitable corporations in history. While some of the froth will inevitably be washed away, it won't be the system-wide collapse that defined a generation of investors. We are not watching a speculative bubble inflate waiting for the pin. We are witnessing the very real and very powerful dawn of a new technological age. Thanks for watching. If you found this breakdown interesting, consider subscribing for more deep dives into the technology shaping our world. Do like and share this video.